Ni gatho mirori wa Chemi Media na maya ni mao mareketi kubu kawuku neda inesia okinyaniria. Tuna kia hatu wiku menyithi ya giku kia Bishop Alan Kuna niwe the founder wa kanitha wa Jubilee Christian Church. Bishop Kuna ni akoreto emuruwa rufo quite a while na ino ni dumiriri ya rekia kurekere dio. Bishop Ben wakanitha wa JCM ni ariki ya gupost na kehe family no pole na o ni gu ariki ya kuadika guku neda inesh ya keesh ya okinyaniria. From JCM Church HQ to Rev. Kathy Kuna and JCC family, it is well with you. This is a journey which we will all face. Bishop Alan Kuna has served God and harvested a lot of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. We will meet again in the beautiful shore. Rest well, my brother. Rest in peace, Bishop Alan Kuna. Na kemodo wetu Garuye Junior King of Kigosho Arika the saddest news today Bishop Kuna Fly with the angels Bishop And may God comfort you Family, the church And all those who loved you Bishop Alan Kuna Is a classic example of a Grass to grace story He overcame all odds To become a voice of reason, integrity And leadership in Kenya Despite being born and raised in Islam, he is deeply committed to seeing people's lives up transformed as a result of truth of God's word with the mandate to teach, train and equip the body of Christ with the word of faith so that believers can live a victorious life. Bishop Alan Kuna is the founder of Jubilee Christian Church in Kenya and a senior pastor in Kenya. He is Kenya's most popular and wealthy pastor. He serves as the vision bearer and overseer of a Jubilee Christian Church where he also serves as a senior pastor. Bishop Alan Kuna is a member of Kikuyu tribe. This is where his parents gave birth and raised him. His grandparents are also descendants of the ancient Kikuyu people. Alan Kuna received his Kenyan Certificate of Education after graduating from high school in Kenya. Mwiruri gugutiga na bisha shia Bishop Alan Kuna shia hau kafere kuri ugu wakani daini wake ni kuo Jubilee Christian Church. Adukari ganiro kuhutia like, subscribe button. Battle that David entered, David conquered. David was such a man of God, a man after God's heart, that most of the Psalms that are in the book of Psalms are written. Two thirds of the Psalms in the Bible are written by David. He was a great worshiper, he was a great man of God, he was such an incredible man of God. The Bible says that David did desired to build the house of God, but God to send the prophet Nathan and told him that you are not going to be the one that will build my house, David. David, but your son shall do it. And the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 29, I love this verse because God told him he wouldn't do it. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, Father mocking David, say to all the assembly, My son Solomon, whom, uh, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is greater because of the temple. Uh, because, because the temple is not for man, but the temple is for the Lord. Now he said, Now for the house of my God. I prepared with all my might. He said, I may not be able to build the house of God, but I'm going to prepare for it with all my might. I may not be the one who shall lay the foundation. I may not be the one who shall make sure that everything is in place. But before I go, I will prepare gold for the things of gold, silver for the things of silver, bronze for the things of bronze, iron for the things of iron, wood for the things of wood, onyx stones, stone set, glistering stones of colors, and all kinds of precious stones stones and, and marble and slab in abundance. Verse 3. Moreover because uh, I have set my affection. The house is not even built uh, but he says I have already set my affection on the house of God. I have given uh, I have given and I have prepared for the holy house of God. This one an amazing man but there was something about the life of David that is amazing. 
David had a dysfunction that he never dealt with. David had a dysfunction that he never dealt with. What is that dysfunction? David as a son was not loved by his father. David as a son was not loved by his father. What is the proof? When Samuel the prophet comes to the house of Jesse, the father of David, to anoint the king who will take over from Saul, David is not even called to the party because he is out in the chamber taking care of his fathership. All his seven other brothers are in the house. But the David is out there tendering after his father's ship. He is not loved by his father. In fact, there are theologians who believe that David was a son of Jesse from a concubine. That is why he says that in iniquity was I formed. I was shaped in iniquity. They believe that David was one of those boys that Jesse was trying to hide because he was a mistake. And therefore David grew with that dysfunction of being not loved by his father. Guess what? The same dysfunction because he never dealt with it. All the sons of David became flops. All the sons of David. Let me go through them. Absalom. Absalom was, let's begin with Amnon. Amnon was the firstborn of David. Amnon was such a man of poor character that he was driven by lust and ended up raping his own sister Tamar. Raping it. These are the sons of David. Let's talk about Absalom. Absalom was so hot tempered. So her tempered and couldn't receive the counsel of his father. And went ahead and killed Amnon because of raping his sister Tamar. On top of that, David never dealt with Absalom. In fact, he never talked to Absalom. He abandoned Absalom after Absalom has murdered Amnon. And guess what? Even when Amnon raped his sister Tamar, you don't see a conversation between David and Amnon. Absalom kills Amnon to revenge or to avenge his sister Tamar. You don't see a conversation. In fact, Absalom says, uh, David says that Absalom should be cast out of the city. And after a while, the Joab and some of the people around David tell him, you know, Absalom has really, you know, he's feeling so lonely. You need to bring him back. And David brings back Absalom but doesn't allow him to come to his house. And Absalom goes to sit at the gate. Now the next Next part of Absalom. Absalom was also a betrayer who plotted with the people on how to take the throne of David. Absalom, after some time, turned against David and took his throne. David walks and leaves the palace. Absalom gets in the palace and guess what he does in the palace? He sleeps with his father's concubine. He sleeps with David's concubine as the whole of Israel is watching. That is Absalom. This was the most handsome go guy. Go to Adonijah. Adonijah, another son of David. Adonijah conspired to take the throne of David. He, in spite of the fact that he knew that Solomon was a successor. And Adonijah also died like that. Solomon, another son. Because most of the other sons, we don't even hear about them. So Solomon, the other guy. 700 wives, 300 concubines. This guy had some serious dysfunction. That the only way he thought he could fix it was a new woman every night. Where does it come from? The father never fixed the pain of being rejected by the father. And you begin to see the same pattern in his own life. So what do we do, Bishop? Because now we see the picture. What do we do? And this is where I want to talk to you. If you know the first thing that you have to do. The first thing, help me, help me son. The first thing that you must do for you to be able to deal with the dysfunction. Number one, and I wanted to hear me clearly, is that you must be willing to courageously and boldly point at the area of the dysfunction yourself. What do I mean? You must take responsibility of your dysfunction if God is going to help you fix it. 
Let me repeat that. You must take responsibility and say, this is the thing that the enemy has used to whoop me. It is the rejection. It is the broken home. It is the molestation. It is the rape. It is this. It is the other. It is the spirit of poverty that has followed me. You must be willing to point at the dysfunction if God is going to bring the prosperity of the soul. Otherwise, if you don't point at it, God cannot heal it.